All right, excellent. So we're recording, we're live. Welcome everybody to the Fit Banker Kilimanjaro Trek 2017. Uh, I was just saying that on this call we have uh, two groups of people, those of you that have already signed up and are really excited to be meeting uh, many of you and to connect with you in person soon uh, doing this trek with us. And I honestly swear it's one of the best experiences I did in 2014. And I'm going to share about that experience. And since then, the 22 other people that we did this climb with have literally gone from strangers to very hardcore family. And we really get to connect and bond with people through an experience like a mountain. And we get to develop our leadership uh, simply through the experience of what it takes to create this mountain climb, the fundraising involved the networking, the connecting, and actual the summit. Uh, and you realize your leadership may not realize it after you're down, but many months later when you look back at the climb, you realize what a shift you caused by taking that on. So uh, context, I'll kick off context with this uh, beautiful quote by Jack uh, Kerouac, which is, because in the end, you won't remember the time you spent working in the office or mowing the lawn, climb that goddamn mountain. Uh, and I couldn't have said it any better. Uh, I think um, it was well said when I asked one of my very good friends, as I asked her, what would, what would you do if today was the last day of your life? Like literally, if today was the last day, what would each of you guys do? And um, a very common answer I hear back and that I have myself is I'd love to be summiting a mountain. Uh, and I think it is one of the most beautiful, most epic things um, anyone can do and I think everybody in this world deserves to see the beauty that that earth offers us so uh, let's get cracking in this is uh, 17th to 27th November those are the dates we need to arrive in uh, Mount Kilimanjaro at the base uh, in a town called Moshi and departing from there on the 27th and then I'll share with you as we go over today what all is included so it's an eight-day leadership summit. We're not doing just a climb. So as you listen today, my invite to you is to listen for, I'm here to take on what is a leadership summit, and it is not just a climb. Now, bulk of it is obviously the climb. That's where a lot of our energy will go. And the last thing I would want for people is, as we're doing this climb, a lot of your energy at the end of a tired day is, is me trying to pull out a whiteboard and say, explain a concept to you. Um, your leadership will be discovered really experientially. We will have uh, some talks prior uh, on the mountain and after. And on the eighth day, the seven days is the climb. One day we're going to spend doing what we call seva or a day of gratitude. With all leadership, uh, developing leaders really requires an awareness, uh, connectedness and presence to people in all uh, walks of life and people that are contribution to us. Um, so we, we're going to spend the eighth day working with a school that is uh, built for by the community and is still being built for the uh, climbers, the porters that are taking us up the mountain. And uh, we'll get to work with them and we will also be partly fundraising for them. We have a very big game here. We're looking to have 25 leaders climbing this and anyone from all walks of life. We have a 13-year-old interested. Um, and we have my 72-year-old dad who's, who's watching right now over Skype who uh, over the past two years has lost 20 kilos doing our health transformation programs, and I would love him to join as well. So, um, so, let's, so let's see. Um, and, uh, and, you know, yet that conversation is still ongoing. This is the world's highest single standing mountain. It is a volcano. It was a, it's an inactive volcano. It was a volcano. It is one of the most epic, epic pieces of beauty on this earth. It has a lot more uh, significance than what we call the seven peaks. So if I told you as uh, mountaineers, once you've done one mountain, you discover that there are these seven peaks that everyone talks of. Most don't even know the name of the other five other than Everest and Kilimanjaro. The difference between Everest and Kilimanjaro is, well, to summit Everest costs about $50,000 or $60,000 to do it. And it also requires an element of what we call technical climbing. So you're going to need some ropes, some gear, some picks, and so on. Whereas with Kilimanjaro, it is more or less predominantly a walking trek. And it's why uh, I want my 72-year young dad to do it. 
and my father-in-law as well to join us. It's an altitude of 5,895 meters or 19,000 feet. So when your plane is flying above there, the planes fly at about 30,000 feet. So just 10,000 feet on top of that. Uh, we're going to spend nine days on the ground. That's because uh, when you arrive on the 17th, on the 18th will be a day of just acclimatizing, meeting people. We'll have some uh, introductory sessions and we're going to do health, safety, gear check, equipment check to make sure we have everything. It's, it's uh, you know, it's not uh, unexpected that we, uh, we spend months preparing and telling what we need for this climb. And the day before everyone finds, oh my God, I forgot X or I left my gloves. Um, and that was my own experience. I got there without gloves. Um, and then I ended up having to use the day before to quickly source it somewhere locally. So uh, there is some gear that you can hire, uh, but we, we recommend buying most of it because I think this will just be the beginning of your discovery into adventure. Um, so there's also an optional three-day safari that you can do. We'll talk about that later. That's not the key focus of this, but uh, if for some people going out to that part of the world, which is beautiful, is the first time, and uh, if you're booking your flight tickets to go there anyway, you may want to do uh, three nights of uh, safari. And we're also going to arrange that for you, but it's um, that's not part of this leadership summit. Okay, so, um, you know, whenever you're posting about it, and if you want to invite anybody to this, I invite you guys to invite as many people as you can. Might be your partner, might be friends, might be your work colleagues might be family. This truly is a once in a lifetime thing. And my invite to you guys is, is to take on the privilege of uh, doing it with anybody in your life that you love or matter. Before I go too deep in, some of you guys aren't familiar with FitBanker. So I'm very quickly going to go through an intro about us very quickly about what we do. Uh, so I used to be a fat banker and I went from fat banker to fit banker. We're an online health transformation. Uh, we caused some of these amazing results. These are people who participated from all over the world. Uh, that was uh, Hanish, that is Rebecca, that is uh, Ushma, uh, that is Andrew, lost 30 pounds, that is the fit doctors, that's guy on the left lost 53 pounds, the other guy 30 something pounds, uh, through our 90 day health transformation programs. Uh, we've had about 200 lives to our program so far, we're just about to cross, we have a new challenge starting next week, Monday, not tomorrow, but a week from now. Uh, just in case, I know some of you are on this considering joining our program. The early bird price goes up midnight tonight. I thought I'd just quickly plug that there so that you don't lose up. Uh, but moving on quickly, uh, we've had people from 15 countries. We focus on health. We've had a lot of people get off medication like cholesterol medication, high BP, disappear, psoriasis, and eczema, and other things with uh, moms or young moms or ladies struggling with pregnancy and men as well, being able to get their bodies into a very optimal prime health state uh, and having babies just like we did. Um, what we're now doing is we suddenly have all these amazing, abled, physically fit bodies that have done our program and they want, they love our brand, they love what we do and they want to do more. And so we, end of last year, we launched retreats and treks and we do treks on a regular basis. And now we really want to have, tie it into leadership because our commitment is really developing leaders. And so, hence, Mount Kilimanjaro is all about developing leaders, and that's what we're uh, committed to now. Last bit I want to talk about is what I consider my personal dharma or my duty, or in many ways, I, I find, and I, I, I tended to shy away from this previously, but I really have this passion and interest and love for making people believe that they can. So anyone on this webinar, I can see all the names here, if anyone that is joined in here says to me, I don't think I can, um, or I'm not sure if I'm fit enough, my answer, my response to you is, yes, you can if you sign up now with the right prep and the right planning and the right preparation. Um, I believe this has got so much to do with mindset than anything. Uh, and I think um, I'm gifted in being able to uh, enroll people or influence people or convince people and empower them to do it, not just some uh, bullshit woo-woo stuff, but we've taken people through it. This was in 2013 when I was my heavy self. We took people kayaking. Uh, this is in New Zealand, uh, across a small strip of the, the ocean to 
uh, this volcanic mountain called Rangitoto. We kayak across. None of us ever been in a kayak before, by the way. Took everybody in this open water, pretty high tide, went across a few kilometers distance, uh, climbed the mountain, came back down, and then wore the t-shirt. That was us. And uh, 2014, we did uh, Kilimanjaro. This was initially as a fundraising project for conservation that I did with a friend of mine called Sunil. And uh, I was in charge of the marketing, the design, and the plan was three of us to do it. And we ended up 22 people doing it. This is a photo with 20 of us. Not all 22 summited. And that should be a uh, reminder to all of you guys that this is not a mountain to take lightly and take for granted. Uh, one of our teammates, Shay, had to go down on day four and a half. She was a nurse and she had cerebral endema, which means swelling of the brain. Uh, we had people here as young as 18 and as old as 37 on this particular trek. But uh, I'll talk to you a bit about who and what age you can be to do it. Uh, and it was one of the most epic things. This is something else that we did at Banker last year. We did Tough Mudder and all aligned with taking people out of their comfort zone. We took this Paralympian on wheelchair and we started off with about five of us committed around him. And then it pulled together a crowd of 12 and then it pulled together everyone along Tough Mudder would support this guy on wheelchair, take him through. And it's just about inspiring people to really make believe in themselves that they can, right? So that is what I feel I'm really able to do. And it's my commitment to people because I've always grown up with this point of view that if any one other person can, then so can I. Uh, you might be people that are even joining our health transformation program, and you will see that my whole science is is simply from I saw others can do it, and therefore we created something I can. And if I can, anybody else can. I have nothing... Uh, no superpower or gift. So this was the uh, 2014 climb that we did. Um, and uh, for then, at that time, it was about 2000 is what it would cost, all inclusive. And uh, that was three years ago. Unfortunately, Mount Kilimanjaro has become one of the most uh, expensive mountains because they have hiked up two things. They hiked up their park entry fees and they have hiked up um, and they've introduced VAT, which is something that wasn't there previously. So suddenly everything has gone up about 30 to 40 percent. It's become, uh, of the seven peaks, it's become one of the most um, ratio-wise uh, expensive climbs. Look at this piece of beauty here. This is a piece of Kilimanjaro, which you're standing on this, and for miles and miles and miles, as far as your eye can see, and as long as you walk that day, everything you see looks like this. And you begin to think, wow, like this is a piece of earth and, uh, and you can see the rock is volcanic rock, but what's interesting is it's got weed growing on it that almost looks like lava as it was thousands of years ago. I think it's one of the most beautiful, beautiful mountains. We will go through seven, six, five or six terrains. You start from tropical forest, and one of the days, this is what it looks like. And I just, when I stand on this, this part of this mountain, I stood here, the only thing I can think about is my family and my dear friends. I'm like, everyone must see this. This is like the most beautiful thing. If I could teleport people to it to go and see how beautiful this earth is, I would do that if I could create that machine. But at the moment, I can't create that. Uh, and so I would rather take you myself in person and uh, hold your hand or you hold my hand and uplift me up there. Uh, this is a mountain where even if I've done it before and people have done it, 40, 50 times, uh, it's never granted, uh, guaranteed that you will uh, climb this mountain. So a bit about the mountain, as mentioned, it's 5,895 meters, world's tallest mountain. We're going to be doing a route called Machame route, uh, and you will walk uh, between 62 to 80 kilometers. I say Machame route or similar because there might be the ad hoc uh, nipping off uh, a set route uh, as part of the journey. Uh, on a daily basis, what you need to know in terms of your fitness is you need to be able to walk between 5 to 17 kilometers. Uh, and walking for as long as, say, 16 hours is the max you have to walk on one day, uh, but an average of about 5 kilometers. So if you are in London and you're joining our treks, we are creating treks that are going to have us mentally condition ourselves and get acquainted with what does 5 hours of walking look like. The first one is uh is actually 
13 days from now, I think. We're doing it on the 20th of May. And uh, anybody that is London or in the UK, if you'd like to join, or if you're Europe, I know this, I've seen some people from other parts of Europe joining us. If you would like to join this, then uh, please do join. Please come over to London. Uh, we have two other people coming from overseas on that day, and they're coming to hang out, and it would be really good to meet them. On the 20th May, because we have people coming from abroad, we also have a movie night that evening. We're going to watch the movie Everest, and it's going to be a really long, tiring day. Uh, just book a place uh, near Chiswick, and that's where the trek will start and begin. Uh, what's also included is there will be accommodation. We'll be staying at the base, so you have to spend two nights in a hotel at the base. We will. Most people spend one night after the climb before they leave. We're going to spend two nights because we're doing a day off, Seva, the day after the climb. We're going to go through five terrains, and the temperatures will vary from over 30 degrees to minus 20 degrees at summit. Uh, funny story, when I went 2014, the craze on social media then was uh, the ice bucket challenge. I'm not sure how many of you remember that. And uh, I was silly enough to uh, want to do it at summit. So I chose to do the ice bucket challenge. And those of you that are uh, going to be coming uh, on there, think about something that you would love to do at summit. It might want to be a Guinness uh, Book of World Record that you'd like to do. Uh, so think about it. We can think about something creative and as a group we can do it. Uh, I've heard there's been a music band that has played uh, a live band at the top. There's been people that have gone as 11 and they played uh, two groups of 11. They played a cricket match on the summit of Mount Kili and various other things. I thought of doing an ice bucket challenge and I obviously didn't know what happens to water at minus 20 degrees when it lands on your face. And so water froze on my face when I did it. Um, you should see the video on YouTube. It's awesome. Um, but it's... Um, it wasn't a world record because Guinness Book of World Records replied to me. They said there was no demonstration of skill involved in that. I was like, thank you very much. Killed me. Um, so the equipment and gear, uh, we highly recommend you start if you're not somebody that has done mountain climbing or skiing. Uh, you can use some ski gear, but it's not necessarily always the same. Uh, that you get it before the climb, you start training in it. And so for that, we're also supporting you. It's part of the benefit of doing this with a group of people that are really committed to uh, developing as leaders versus signing up to a, just a charity or some other organization that might be doing it and expecting to meet you and know you on the day. We really want to start knowing people and getting acquainted with you right from the moment you sign up, right from this webinar. Um, and uh, you don't want to break your gear in on the climb. You might get loads of blisters, especially when it comes to your boots. Um, so there are going to be guides, there's going to be staff, there's going to be a ratio of two to one. So for every climber, there's support staff, meaning porters, waiters, guides, um, everything, a ratio of two to one to you. There's a lot of extras we do on our climb that most others don't do. Uh, the last time we did it, we had a lot of uh, ladies joining our climb. And I thought that the ladies will be uh, very particular about things like hygiene and the bathroom and toilet and so on. Uh, I later found out that it was the men that were very finicky and particular uh, up that mountain. So, but for that, we did get some additional what are called chemical toilets. Along the mountain, you either, uh, if it's mid route and you need to go, you will go behind one of those rocks there and do, do the deeds, or you have uh, what are called long drops. So long drops are at each of the campsites that we're at. You get to, uh, there are these pit toilets that are, are holes bored into the mountain and you use them. But obviously, um, you know, they're not the world's cleanest things. They're not a five-star hotel. And this isn't a five-star hotel experience. It's not per se glamping experience, but it is going to be very uh, high quality in terms of what we're providing and creating. and. Uh, uh, we have create. We're going to have additional chemical toilets to use, and we're also going to have uh, an additional shower. Again, another thing which was very ambitious of me. We took a shower last time. Uh, I showered till day three, and then it became really cold. Um, so I'll probably do three or maximum day four this time. And day eight is all about gratitude or seva. So we really want to. You will see that these porters and guides. You will be in your moments of total pain, total uh, punishing yourself, can't do it, um, giving up on you. And these guys are trained to watch even the 
slightest movement of your foot and if you begin to drag it they will come in swoop in under uh, their head under your arm and and carry you so we really want to spend time giving back to them and supporting their community that is um what i look like in case you're wondering some people have this question i'm not sure if i'm fit enough uh that was what i looked like in 2014 uh, when I went and did uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. So that was me at the top there after my ice bucket challenge. You can see my face is kind of white because that's ice, water frozen all over it. Uh, and this is the ultimate summit called Uhuru Peak. There's a little summit before it, which is a bit of a teaser. Many people think they've got there, but it just, um, it kills you mentally when you realize you think you've done it. You have the rim, the top rim of the volcano of Kilimanjaro, and you just can't, you think you can't do it anymore. Your body's given up and your mind is being told, I have to keep going. So let's have a look at the, the route we're doing. So this is for those of you that already signed up. We're doing a route called um, uh, called Machame route. So we're going to start from Machame village, which is already at 1800 altitude. And we're going to drive up there from the hotel. And from there, we go through a process checking through the gates and we start walking that day. I think that day's walking is going to be about only four or five hours and we will reach or maybe even yeah between three and five hours we'll reach Machame camp at 3,000 meters so we'll immediately go up in elevation 1.2 kilometers we then spend a the night there at that camp Machame camp and from there the next day in the morning six o'clock somebody will come and knock on your tent they'll give you a nice cup of hot chocolate or hot tea or hot coffee or whatever it is you your preferences of what you drink and then we're going to start the trek that day we're going to go to Shira camp now this is going to be a very interesting trek. It's only 800 meters in elevation, but it is quite a long distance. And it does start build, testing us and building us up mentally for the endurance we need for day three. Now, day three, you can see that line is no exaggeration. What we do on day three is we go all the way up about uh, 800 meters in altitude. We go to this beautiful part of the mountain called Lava Tower. Absolutely beautiful. Around here is where a lot of people start vomiting uh, and that's uh, simply because we have pushed it that day and altitude is something that we cannot really train for and after that we have a lovely lunch there and we cleanse that vomit out and then we come walk downhill and we come to this place called Barranco Hall where we're at an altitude that's only 100 meters higher than what we started that morning and this is one of the longest walks so I, I compare day three to giving birth uh, and I haven't given birth, but I'm pretty sure it's like that. Um, and then day three, Barranco has got a little wall there. It's called Barranco Wall. And it's the only day of, per se, technical climb. It's where we will use more than two limbs of ours. So we'll use three limbs. And we will walk across this. We'll use our hands to get across the wall. Again, anyone can do this. The guides and porters do this with a 20 or 30 kilo load on their head, uh, carrying our tents and our luggage. To the next place well not really that heavy they have a certain limit on health and safety um policy they have to adhere to now especially with the guys that we choose to use uh that day we will again go up to karanga camp and then we'll camp over there now once we camp over there uh that night uh day five we will go up to barafu barafu is swahili for ice and at barafu which is at 4600 you'll be there and you'll the whole time we're watching this peak here. This peak is called Kibo Peak. I remember one of the funny things when we we're going from day three, four, and five, we had this guy asking, when will we climb that mountain? Like, when will we get on the mountain? He had forgotten that there was the 18-year-old we were with, that we've been on this mountain for all this time, but the many points of it look like you're just walking through grassland, through savanna, through Rocky Mountain, through the moon, and it's uh, amazing the size of this mountain. From Barafu, what happens? We go to sleep on day five, and we sleep around 7 p.m. We wake up at 11 p.m. So we sleep about four hours. At 11 p.m. we wake up, we freshen up, we um, have something light to eat or a hot drink, and we start walking in the night. We have head torches, and it's so beautiful going up to the top. And we get to the first bit of the rim, which is uh, Stella Peak, and that's at about 5,006 uh, something, 5,700. And then we have to walk. It's only like... 10 meters to go to the final bit, but it, uh, it 10 minutes in normal ground level, but it takes us about uh, it takes us about 45 minutes to do that last piece to get to Uhuru Peak. 
and then we finally come down on the same day back to Barafu. We go beyond Barafu and we come to Mueka camp. That's where we spend the night. And from Mueka camp at 3,000 meters, we finally come down to Mueka village on the coming down day. So um, this is another, another view of the map. When we're on Kibo, you will see this little peak. It, it's sticking out above the clouds. It's one of the most beautiful things to see. Uh, this is us on the mountain, and there's that little piece jutting out there called uh, Mawenzi. So a really beautiful thing, just a part of this world that I think every human being must see. So who can climb Mount Kilimanjaro? So here's something, first of all, to um, wake you all up. This is an 86-year-old woman, and uh, my dad's on this webinar, so just a reminder to dad. 86-year-old uh, woman did this. This was last year. Uh, she's a Russian lady that did this, and she got into Guinness Book of World Records. Um, and uh, don't read too many of her comments about the pain below there. She did say it was extremely hard, uh, and she explains it nicely. On first day, they went through a forest. Second day, her ears started ringing, and on the third day, it became almost unbearable. Um, but it's interesting she still submitted this at 86. And why is that? How do people do that? It has got so much to do with uh, mental fitness more than anything. So you've got to have that determination to keep going. Uh, and the park has various policies around things like um, age limit, things like uh, level of fitness and certain equipment and gear. And we will be basically adhering to the, the top of that. There's a general guideline, the low age limit is 10. But we, after we did our last climb, somebody inspired by our climb, we shared about it. We we connected them to the guys that we used and they took their son as a family, mom, dad, and the two boys went and he was nine years old. And he's, if you Google it, the Guardian newspaper, there's an article, Britain summits Mount Kilimanjaro age nine. He's got the UK uh, record uh, for doing it at age nine. The upper age limit, there is no age limit. So, so long you have to make that call and the guys that you're going with have to make that call. So some companies may refuse to take certain people if they think that your fitness isn't there, if they haven't been able to assess it. Uh, they, they wouldn't say no if you're connecting to them online. Uh, they would tell you of the risks and you just may lose out on having paid for something and then not being able to do it. Um, fitness levels, there's a common saying that it is more painful than childbirth. That's truly what's said of it. Um, and, and my wife uh, gave birth recently and I was there when that was happening and I think she did cry a bit more on Kilimanjaro. So I say that because I don't want anybody here, while I say anyone can do it, I don't want anyone to think they can wing it. Uh, the more fitter you are, the greater chance you have of summiting. Sometimes the more fitter you are, but the more cocky you are. Uh, what I mean by that is you go there and you're being very competitive and you're trying to rush ahead of the crowd. Your ego will humble you. So this mountain is not about conquering the mountain, but the mountain, it's about conquering yourself uh, that will have you discover a new you. Uh, I, I can't, can't, can't emphasize enough how beautiful an experience it will be to discover what your potential is after you climb this mountain. Um, because the way most people that rush ahead don't summit is they don't acclimatize to the altitude. So there's a lot of mental and science to getting prepared to do this. There are some medical checks that you need to do. Um, and if you're over 60 for men, if you're over 65 for women, then just make sure you get medical clearance. Mainly if you have things like any heart conditions or you have some altitude sickness, stuff like that, you want to check it up and just get clearance from your doctor. This is a walking trek, remember that? So so long you can walk certain period of hours in a day and do it day after day, then you'll be able to do this. Um, there's cerebral edema, which you can get, which I told you, swelling of the brain. And it shows up simply as um, migraines. You'll have these severe migraines. Uh, there are some pills you can take to deal with altitude. We recommend not taking them, not taking them prior, uh, and only taking them if and when we tell you or the health and safety guys in our group tell you to do so. Otherwise, um, you know, right hydration. We do some breathing exercises. We will start off with some yoga and stretching in the mornings. Uh, before going up, and it's just beautiful in the mornings uh, when we get up and we're all fresh, and you will you will have visions of that every morning. What it was like waking up with those people doing this climb. 
So let's very quickly move into looking at some photos from the last trip. So this was the last trip. This was the gate we got in. We all register. We sign up. We sign our lives and risk and whatnot away. Uh, this is us just starting off at the first place. Uh, very happy at this point before the climb. This is us going in. All the porters and guides have to get what they're carrying weighed in so that nobody is carrying any excess load. That's my wife there. Uh, and this is, uh, again, everything being checked and double-checked that what they're carrying is also waterproof. And this was, we left around lunchtime and before sunset, we have passed through the tropical part and we've re reached the first camp. Um, this is what it looks like uh, in the morning. This is how they come with their coffee and tea to serve you and wake you up in the morning. It is just amazing and awesome and you're so filled with gratitude for these guys. This is uh, the porters. They move at such a fast pace. This is them carrying luggage. We have to move out of the way for them to zoom past carrying all our gear to the next stop to set up camp. Uh, you truly are floating above the clouds. This is Nalini from one of our last climbs. Uh, and that's Kibo Peak in the background. So it's like I say, this is at Shira Camp. We're still going to traverse round uh, horizontally here before we start the vertical ascent. So pretty beautiful. We're doing our morning stretches and just getting us mentally psyched up and prepared for the day. Uh, and this guy, Danush, uh, is a yoga guy. He knows yoga, so it's basically over some amazing breathing exercises that, for me, really eliminated my migraines. And it was, it can be the most annoying thing, climbing with a migraine, um, but, uh, you know, it's still something that you, we can address and with the right, um, maybe taking some pills and breathing, it will help you bring that down. You can also get nose bleeding. So this is a guy who had nose bleeding up the climb, uh, and it's not something to be freaked out about and it's something that we have first stage trained people on the climb to be able to work with you this guy is a uh, 37 year old he was one of the fittest guys and he didn't manage to do the ultimate summit we also get these lovely head torches that we're going to use uh, this is more of that volcanic region uh, with this beautiful vol volcanic rock and it's just one of the most epic things to see and do uh, you get water it's meant to be really pure water flowing from the glaciers on the top uh, coming down. Uh, and previously you could drink it, but nowadays you don't because some people might be polluted because some people may pee somewhere up along the way. But still beautiful water and very clean, felt, smells very pure anyway. Uh, there's some amazing plants that and fauna that you see along the way. Like uh, this one here grows for about 70, 80 years. And it sheds the leaves as it keeps absorbing water and it, uh, the top is always green as the bottom sheds throughout the year. Um, just some of the most beautiful things. Hey, you're walking through clouds, right? So you're always walking through what looks like a hazy place in many parts of it. And then this is Barranco Wall. And this is the wall which is a bit of a technical climb. So you can see people here going. This is as technical as it gets, right? So you'll have your hands maybe leaning on these rocks as you climb up. Um, I was able to do most of it without too much of hand holding, uh, and most of you will be able to. These guys do it with carrying a load. Sometimes you do an extra stretch and it rips things. So that was one of the guys, Chirag, on our last climb. Uh, and uh, then we eventually get to Barafu Hut, which is Swahili for uh, for ice. And this way it's really freezing. By here, we this day we have our four layers on. Um, uh, we have a full equipment or gear list that we provide. So those of you that have signed up, you should have already received that. Uh, and this week we have our exclusive shopping event. That is uh, Mawenzi. That's the Mawenzi peak in the morning. So we're just about to summit. The sun has just cracked through the edge of clouds and it's falling on us. And you suddenly experience warmth because all night you're cold, feel, your feet like, feel like they're about to fall off with the cold. Uh, they're very freezing. You also need a particular type of boot that has very good insulation at the base of it and around it because it gets very cold. This is us looking now. We're up on Kibo. We're about to hit that top there, and we're thinking that's all that we have to get to. You're looking back. People are walking slow. You're, like, encouraging them. This is your leadership at play. This is where you get to influence and empower a and other being to discover their greatness to go right and it's just walking slowly there's a saying we say on the mountain and uh which is pole pole swahili for uh slowly slowly 
Oh, lovely to see it. We got Joe from Belgium on. Uh, okay, Joe, thank you so much. Yep, we'll send you the recording as well. And lovely if you could bring other people as well. Uh, now, this is the part where you reach. Have a read here. People are hugging themselves. People have dropped there. They are crying. This guy is no mood to talk. And this is not the final summit. This is what's called stellar point. We're at only 5756. We still have 140 more meters to go. And here, people have mentally or physically given up. And everyone dropped here. Out of 22, four people went ahead, or five, four people went ahead. Uh, and then 18 people plonked themselves down here and they had given up. One guy, uh, the, the really fit guy, he had, well, 17. One girl went down on day four and a half. And of the 17 people, this one guy was, um, uh, he had diarrhea right from the time we started the climb, so he couldn't do it. And at this point, people give up thinking they cannot do it anymore. Here you're on the rim of the mountain. You can see inside the crater. So the, everyone suddenly turned like, uh, turned on me. What the heck, Rani? This is not about ego. Why should we go to the final point? I'm not going to do this. This is killing me. I can't put my life at stake. And me and the guides, well, I was in my mind just laughing, saying, there's no way we can live with doing 99.5% of the mountains and not the rest. Um, however, I didn't have a say over all the other people, and I won't have a say over you guys, because many of you at this point, and remember this, would be in a position where you're very convinced that it's a great idea to punch me in the face. And the only person I could say it to was my wife. I said, babes, I'm going to tease you and mock you for the rest of our life if you reached here and gave up. It's only 10 more minutes we can do it. Um, but that what looked like 10 more minutes going from here to the final summit, uh, 140 meters higher, took us about 45 minutes. And most people summit around uh, 9 or 10 in the morning, 8 or 9 in the morning. We summited, most of us on average, about 11, 11.30, some of us at 1 p.m. There were some very slow people. And the only way we can avoid that is we got to keep training. Nobody will be under pressure. If we find that you're slow from any of the days earlier, we will set you to start off early in the day. So dad, as an example, if you come, if most of us leave at 7.30, you will go ahead with a couple of uh, very amazing guides and you will start off at, say, 6.30. And we will catch up with you by lunchtime or we will catch up with you uh, along the way. Uh, this is what you look like when you're at that first point and you're being told, we still have another 45 minutes to go. So. Not a very pleasing sight, uh, but you know it's it's just awesome. Uh, we had a good laugh about all this when we came down. We created an awards ceremony because we we formed such an amazing uh, such an amazing bond. Uh, we keep in touch with everybody. Uh, this is now the walk, and that white there that you see didn't come out clear on the camera, but basically these massive white glaciers. Um, if I have a photo, I'll, I'll very quickly show you what it looks like. It's one of the most epic things that you've ever seen. I want to see if I can very quickly show you one. Um, and it is one of the most beautiful things that you can, you can really treat yourself to. I just, I just want to show you the, the glacier and you see how beautiful it is. And um, it is worth everything. And by the way, those of you that are thinking of uh, ever doing this some point later, two things are changing about Kili. First of all, it's just getting more and more costlier, which is uh, a bit annoying. And I think they should freeze that at some point. And the other thing about Kilimanjaro is that it's also um, the glaciers. If we are bought into this whole global warming thing, the glaciers are per se disappearing. So they are uh, getting smaller, apparently. And that's part of the water that melts and comes down. And so, you know, is something, those, look at those beauties. This is what we're talking about. Let's see if I got a better picture there. That, um, like this is, this is what's at the top of Kilimanjaro. And it's the most beautiful things you've ever, ever seen. Um, and do it, guys. Do it with people that you will form an amazing lifetime bond with. So that was a good picture captured by one of our other teammates. Uh, this is us. We're representing Zambia. I'm from Zambia. This was the 18-year-old that I got to enroll before he started university. 
I think he's grateful for life. He did it with us. Uh, this is our celebrating. So bring your country's flags. We're gonna fly. We're gonna fly them high. That's my wife. It was just one of the most epic things. Uh, and then I did the ice bucket challenge, and this was right after it. And uh, this is the whole crew. These guides literally become your gods. You literally love and worship them because of what they do. Uh, when we get down to the base, it's all celebration. There's elation like you've never, never experienced before. People get up to all kinds of things to ex express their excitement and love and excitement and enjoyment of what they've just done. And uh, we're all having a few drinks here. There's a big uh, dance and party that happens. It's called a tipping ceremony. So they do the, the porters and guides do this amazing dance and celebration for us. And then we usually tip them. So tipping is something as well that you'll give at your own discretion. As an example, in 2014, the guidelines for tipping was about $60 or $70. Uh, most people were giving $150 to $200 because they were just so thankful for what they experienced. So this time we're recommending a $100 um, guideline to carry for tipping. Uh, we'll talk about that once you've signed up, but that's about that's your own discretion. At the lodge we were at, there was a pool. We're going to have one which will also have a nice pool and nice communal areas and lovely food. So that is going to really be epic. And uh, what else have we got? Yeah, so uh, what does it take then to do the climb? Many of you, some of you have already signed up and paid. Well done. Um, it, normally climbing Mount Kilimanjaro now with a good one. Now, a lot of what you will see on the internet often excludes airport transfers, excludes accommodation, excludes food, uh, excludes a uh, few other extras that you need. If you want an extra toilet, then you pay this extra. If you want an extra shot, pay this extra. So there's a lot of hidden costs with most providers of Kilimanjaro. But an all-in range is about between 2,000 and up to 8,000. You can get a very glamping experience where if you went two or three people, they would still need 16 people to take you up. So you have to pay for the cost of all of those. The more that you are in a group, the less it costs. Uh, the more people you know in the group, the more fun it is, the more memorable it is, and the more you have friends for a lifetime. Uh, we're doing this thing for 2,500. And... It says plus VAT, but scrap VAT. There is no VAT. Uh, I wish I could say we're sponsoring the VAT, but we found out uh, a way that we're not going to have to pay VAT. So VAT is not applicable for this one. So it's only 2,500. And uh, just to manage the ease of payment, if you want to sign up, you have to pay a thousand pounds to be in. And uh, 1,500 you can pay uh, before or by the end of August. And uh, the first 10 would be secured. So the first 10 of you, you can secure it at that price. Things may change closer to the date, but what's definitely changing is your flight ticket. So those are urgent, right? So right now you can book a return flight to Kilimanjaro Airport for 376 It does have an annoying 10-hour stopover in Nairobi. But if you know somebody in Nairobi or if you want to go out for the night in Nairobi, it's also a beautiful place to go out. You will be there from about 10 o'clock at night and your flight is the next morning at 9 a.m. Or you can just sleep in the airport, which many people do. Um, what you also need to get is your own gear or clothing, which means your own jackets, your own stuff. We, we can even provide you with sleeping bags if you don't want to buy your own. But we recommend you get your own. I got my own. You can get decent ones for 40 quid or so. Uh, but you can buy some for as much as 250 quid. Um, and gear and clothing is something where last time we had people spend as much as 750 pounds on and some people spent as little as 300 pounds. So to save you that time and money, we've we've arranged a lot of stuff that will save you time and know where to go to. And I'm happily to do, happy to um, have a call with any of you guys. So why would you want to do it with us? Uh, one, it's going to be an epic life transforming experience, something not to be missed. Uh, if my old man and my father-in-law are coming, uh, it's just a privilege to be taking people that are really doing what's once in a lifetime for them and for you. Um, we will create, my promise is, we'll create this amazing bond that you will not be able to replicate anywhere and forever we will just, um, you know, we will know each other for life. It's, it's what we've experienced the last climb and I can only imagine it gets better and we're going to create a lot more uh, engaging activities up to the build-up and beyond. Uh, we'll be fundraising for two charities. One is Able Child Africa. I've yet to formally confirm and lock that in, but our intention right now is to fundraise for them. They're a charity that creates schools and education and tools for kids with disabilities in Africa. They're in about three, four countries there. They are our charity that we support through Fitbanker as well. 
Uh, and the other one is the school that we're going to be visiting uh, along the slopes of Kilimanjaro. There, these are where the, stu the, fam the kids and the families of these porters and guides live. And we will, there's a school being built by one of our support um, charities. And we're going to go and spend the day there with them. So we'll also fundraise for them. What do we have upcoming? And what are we creating that others wouldn't do? Uh, we, I mean, we're not even comparing to others. We're doing something very unique. And ours is about a leadership summit. Uh, but we have a movie night to get people fired up. On the 20th of May here in London, it's happening in Chiswick. There's a place called Brew. Uh, there's very limited uh, capacity there of about 17 people. So if on 20th May you're in, you have to go to our Facebook page, uh, which is FitBanker Facebook page. Uh, click on the tab that says events, look for 20th May and confirm as going. And then just comment in there whether you are there for the dinner too. Uh, we have training tracks. So our first training track is on 20th May. We have our teammate Emma who's coming in from Spain. We have another friend who's coming in from the US who's a, a former fit banker, is a doctor. I don't believe he's doing the track with us, but he's, he's in London at the moment uh, at that time for some other event. So he's coming to spend the day with us. Um, and life is just literally lived now, guys. So uh, my invite to you guys is don't live life like it's futurized. We've also got discounts, as mentioned. So Mountain Warehouse have given me a verbal commitment of 15, and I'm squeezing to get a 20% off. Uh, we have an exclusive shopping uh, event with them, which means in Fulham, Mountain Warehouse, this Thursday, they're going to close the doors just for us, for those of us that are on the climb. Even if you're not yet decided on the climb and you want to come for this shopping experience, join us. It's free. Whether you buy something or not, come and have a coffee with us. And Ice and Snow, uh, who also connected to uh, the runner's shop, runner's need, they are offering 10% off. Um, not as much, and they are a lot more expensive. Some of the stuff at Ice and Snow is about four times the cost of those things at Mountain Warehouse. The quality of Mountain Warehouse is phenomenal. Uh, there are some things that we will say go to another brand to buy, like merino wool clothing would be really good. And we will provide you that. We have a full list. It's already been provided to those that are uh, climbing with us. Those of you that will be, we'll provide you with all this content. We'll add you to the necessary groups on WhatsApp or Facebook. Uh, so if you're somebody that's in, somebody that is wants to stay in touch, stay interested, let me know and I will keep you on the necessary groups. But do communicate to our Facebook page and we'll add you to the relevant groups. Uh, as mentioned, what's included, all the tents, all the facilities, the toilets, the kitchen, the canteen, the cooking, the communal places, um, the guides, the uh, waiters, uh, three nights, uh, it says three nights accommodation, basically will actually be four nights. So depending on when you land, some people will land on 17th morning, some 17th evening, some might land early morning of the 18th. We recommend landing on the 17th. Uh, there'll be breakfast uh, included where we're staying. Uh, lunch and supper will depend on our plan because there might be certain meals that we go out to eat somewhere. Uh, and there are lovely places to eat in Moshi. And uh, so going out would be a preference and therefore we'll go out there. Those we will pay for ourselves. So maybe you'll spend... Uh, one or two or three meals yourself, and that will be equivalent of about 10 to 12 pounds. Um, all the meals on the climb are included, so everything. Uh, you should still carry your own snacks like Trek bars or your favorite protein bars or whatever you like. Uh, toilets, showers. Um, I will provide you guys with, uh, we can have a call with anyone that's unclear on their fitness. Uh, you can also join a Fit Banker Challenge if you want to, but that's a, a separate program. Uh, and on there, we would give you a training and nutrition guide to get you to your optimal fitness level. Um, we're going to do treks in the UK. So we have six or seven planned between now and then. A couple of them are going to be out of town treks. So the sooner you're in, the sooner we can book accommodation that matches the number. So we might be, we're looking at Brecon Beacons. Uh, we're looking at, um, I think it's Lake District or Snowdon, one of the two. And and it's just an amazing way to get to know people and build a phenomenal rapport with people. So those are all going to be obviously separate. We'll split the cost. They'll just be at whatever it costs us. We'll arrange them ourselves uh, and go for these tracks that are out of town. But the sooner we have numbers in, and even if you're not doing Kilimanjaro and you want to join on some of the local tracks, feel free to join, right? Those are those are open to most uh, to anyone anyway. 
Um, and if you're on the climb, they're free. And if you're not, there's just a five pound admin fee that we charge. Uh, we're providing you with a full gear and equipment list. Uh, and I'll tell you what the recommended brands or what quality to look out for. We'll also be creating FitBanker t-shirts. So um, we'll create some t-shirts for you to uh, wear from now as a build up to um, the climb. Uh, we'll probably get them out in a month and then we will have uh, t-shirts for us once we've summited saying we did it um, and something that you can keep as momentum for life after. Uh, what's not included is obviously the clothing, the accessories, snacks that you want to bring. Uh, accessories meaning any uh, things like walking poles or your bags or um, anything you want to carry. Sleeping bags are there, but like I mentioned, if you we recommend if you want to get your own for use later, then get your own. Air flight is what you have to book, as mentioned, as low as 376, as high as 700. Uh, and tips, keep a provision of an extra 100 each. Um, now, if any of you are joining as couples, right, so you are going to be sharing the same bed, uh, meaning uh, at the hotel accommodation, uh, the tent that we'll be using, most of you will be paired with somebody. There'll be shared tents. So you'll be paired with uh, somebody of the same gender, ideally. And if it is, um, if you're couples, you will also share a tent. And um, if there's an odd number, you may have a tent on your own, but you would appreciate sharing a tent. The warmth at night is a big advantage. Um, whether you guys are snuggled or not, uh, you will love it. And um, yeah, what else can I say? Few risks are there. Uh, there's no guarantee on summiting. Um, you know, sometimes the weather is also unpredictable. Uh, this is t very tentative, but if we, when we cross over 20 numbers, there's one person will be coming who does, is one of UK's top mountaineering guides, and he will be, he's also a lecturer at London Business School, uh, and he will be part of the leadership summit. If he's not there, then that's something I will be running. So effectively, the leadership content that we'll be covering or providing over the eight days of the program. And, you know, if we cross over 30, then I would love to uh, get in a videographer to capture the whole journey um, because it's just it's just one epic experience that you want uh, you want to remember and treasure forever. And uh, yeah, next step. So if you are in, if you want to sign up, you make a payment of thousand pounds. Or um, I mean, to be honest, we're saying that for convenience of our sake. If if there's something that you need to financially work out and you want to pay a, a minimum deposit now, which is five hundred pounds then do pay transfer to that uh, PayPal account. Uh, 300 pounds of it is non-refundable. Uh, if there are some circumstances like you get pregnant before the climb and you, therefore you're told you can't climb, then you know in those instances we can refund, but part of what we have to pay onwards is also non-refundable. So we'll refund as much as we can uh, and the earlier we know the better. Uh, you have to book your flights right away. Uh, get insurance that covers climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, when you're getting insurance, specify that it is not a technical climb, it's a walking climb, that makes a difference. It is over 5,000 meters, so it becomes a different type of insurance. Um, and let's start training and eating well, uh, and then we're gonna create a number of fundraising events. So from those people that are signed up, you will be part of the people volunteering to say, all right guys, now let's create a fundraising event. And this is part of the leadership development in organizing an event, a venue, pulling people together, inviting guests and creating fun around them. Last time we had various things like we had fun auctions, we had a movie night. So a lot of stuff that we can create. So we already got a movie night coming on 20th May uh, and we will be creating more stuff around this. It's just the beginning of a fun journey that is from now and going to last till November, December and beyond. Um, yeah, so. Oh, that's a mistake. That was an offer at the last webinar. I don't know if I should still honor that bonus. Um, there was a uh, a bonus we had. If you signed up by 30th April, you get 50 pounds off. And those that signed up on the day, uh, 100 pounds off. Um, that was a mistake. That wasn't supposed to be there. But anyway, um, that has passed. And if you are doing it as a couple, as couples, though, we would be able to also uh, give you both 100 off, so 200 off, uh, if you're doing it as a couple with somebody. And, uh, and yeah, I guess any questions? This one is the biggest risk of all. Uh, any questions guys? Let me just unmute you. Sorry. Um, lovely to have all of you on just introduce yourself. If, if you're asking a question, 
tell us where you're joining us from and uh yeah sorry was there a question there no 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 not at all it, i think uh, something got in the wrong it, all right excellent uh pamela preet any questions um yeah i just want to know when we can you hear me yeah i can hear you can you hear me, Ronnie? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I just want to ask when we will get the um, like dietary plan and also a fitness plan. Okay. Um, what I will do is uh, I'll get it for you this week. I forgot because I think the others have that. I'll get it to you this week. So if you're signed up today, then you'll get them this week. Okay. Any other questions, Preet? Gurge? Uh, no, no, no questions. No. All right, great. I, I hope this has been useful to you guys. And um, so do let me know if this is something that you'd love to join. It's a, it's something, something to think about, but it's something to not overthink because um, you will thank your future self for it. And uh, I always share this story when I came down off the mountain. Um, when you complete a task like this that you thought was unachievable and you complete it, our ego pops up and our ego says, that was easy. I, I could do that. Um, and despite two people not managing out of our 22. And uh, I thought, what's the big deal? But when we, after we finished the climb, we went to Zambia where I'm from. And uh, a lot of people in the community organized like congratulatory dinners for us. They, they treated us like we we're, um, were heroes coming back home. Uh, and it was really humbling. And one of them was an uncle of mine who was very interested in asking me, what did you do? Which route did you do? How was it? How tough was it? And I was sharing all this, but he was asking me with some a lot of vivid interest. And uh, he's 73, I think, at the time. And he's uh, someone who uh, loves his whiskey. And that's become part of his lifestyle and has an impact on his health. And he was asking me very interested. And I said, would you like to do it? Should we go next year? And he said, you know what, Ronak, I went there. When I was your age, about 30-something, we went and did that climb. We went to do the climb. We were at the base. We saw it. We were about to sign up. We were there for the right number of days. And then we, the more we discussed about it, the more we said, you know what, let's go and do this game park or let's go and visit this other town. We'll come and do it next year. And he says, it's now been 40 years and we never went back and did that climb. And I'm 73 now and I don't have the fitness or the health to go and do it. Uh, and to me, in that moment, it really, really realized what we've, uh, what we've accomplished and I just got wow like lives pass people by and uh, and then they pass on saying I wish I did I, I should have I could have so um, I just don't want I want to leave you guys with that thought and I really want you guys to uh, this quote by Randy Commissar the most dangerous risk of all is the risk of spending your life not doing what you want on the bet you can buy yourself the freedom to do it later so have a powerful Sunday again thank you all for being on if anybody is on uh, and wants the recording because you want to share it with somebody, you want to invite somebody, uh, please do let me know. I think, um, Joe, I've seen you put that request. Thank you so much. So I will send that over to you. Um, and, uh, yeah, I love you. If you have a group that wants to join, uh, then uh, do let me know. All right. Excellent. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have an awesome Sunday. And please reach out to me for any other questions. Bye.